If you weren't living under a rock, you must have heard about red light therapy for improved skin, hair, and even more benefits. You're probably spending hundreds on creams and treatments to look younger, but what if I told you that red light therapy is one of the most effective anti-aging tools, better than serums or a laser even in some cases? Let's dive deeper into the invisible and completely painless way we are approaching skin aging from the inside out all science back. Hi, I'm Dr. Mamina Terregano, a triple board certified dermatologist, internist, and dermatopathologist. I've treated thousands of patients, and the more I learn about red light therapy, the more excited I get about this topic and its role in skin health and longevity. So red light therapy or photobiomodulation works by delivering red and near infrared light into your skin. These wavelengths penetrate deep enough to reach your mitochondria, so just going back to high school biology, these are the powerhouses of your cells. When mitochondria absorb red light, they produce more ATP, which is cellular energy. So with more energy, there's better repair, better regeneration. So that results in things like younger skin, healthier joints, better functioning muscles, better circulation in your scalp to potentially promote hair growth. Studies with red light therapy show increases in collagen, elastin, and circulation, which means firmer, smoother, brighter skin. And here's the kicker. It does all this without causing damage, unlike potentially with lasers or peels. How do you use red light? So you can either go in clinic for powerful LED panels or lasers, or use an FDA cleared home device. I personally recommend masks or handheld wands that emit light at the wavelength between 630 to 660. For skin rejuvenation, we focus a lot of between like 630 and 633, although some great devices use between 640 and 660. And then when it comes to infrared, we're getting closer to like that 850 nanometer range. So for skin rejuvenation, you wanna aim for about five to 15 minutes per session. We do recommend like three to five sessions per week. Honestly, whatever device you have, whether it's a handheld device or a mask, it will come with directions or it'll have like an automatic timer on how long it should be used. The light should feel warm, but definitely not hot. And yes, eye protection is super important. Oftentimes with masks, there are already like built-in eye protective mechanisms in place. One study showed an 86% reduction in crow's feet wrinkles after 12 weeks of just nine minutes a day. Red light therapy is something that I have personally incorporated into my routine over the last three or four years, and I have certainly noticed a difference. I've noticed that I have needed less Botox. I know I've also like been doing a lot of, of skincare, and I think that's also playing a big role too, but uh, red light therapy has been definitely a great supplement to my skin routine. It is safe for all skin tones, but if you have melasma or very sensitive skin, you wanna start slow. So the thing with melasma is that it's interesting because it can be potentially helpful for melasma. Melasma is related to increased oxidative stress in the skin. So if you have better functioning cells, better repair and regeneration, you can theoretically improve melasma. And a lot of people do report improvement with melasma, but you also wanna just be careful too because melasma is very light sensitive. If you look for the specific nanometer wavelength, you know, between like in the 630s range, it should not affect melasma, but you wanna make sure you're definitely not using a mask or, or device that is emitting a lot of heat because heat definitely can make melasma worse. Also, please, avoid direct eye exposure. If you're pregnant or if you have light sensitivity or if you're on meds that can increase light sensitivity, obviously you should talk to your doctor first. Red light is non-ionizing, so that means it won't damage your DNA or burn your skin. But as with anything, more isn't better. Overuse might reduce the benefits or irritate your skin even. Here's where it gets exciting. Red light therapy doesn't just help your skin. Actually, most of the studies have been done in areas outside of the skin. Early studies in animals show that it may enhance brain function, muscle recovery, and even extend lifespan. In one study, mice treated with near-infrared light had better heart function and lived significantly longer. Another study in fruit flies showed that 100 to 175% more made it to older age. When there's more energy at the cellular level, that means slower aging overall, and people using it often report better sleep and energy. Here's what I recommend. Use a high quality LED panel or face mask that lists exact wavelengths. So 630 to 660 nanometers for red. So look between, like I said, 630 to 660 nanometers for red light. 
810 to 850 for near infrared light. You wanna start with five minutes a day, three to five times a week. When it comes to how long to start, I usually say start around five minutes a day. Some devices recommend eight minutes or 10 minutes. But yeah, you might even cut shorter than what the automatic timer is on some of these masks just to make sure you ease your skin into it. Always use this on clean skin. Don't use actives like retinol right before. You wanna moisturize afterwards and always wear sunscreen during the day. I typically say, you know, you can do, you can incorporate it into your regular skincare routine. The best ways I think to incorporate it is before you do your skincare, whether it's in the evening or in the morning. The main thing is just to make sure that you're using it on clean skin and to make sure that your skin is not sensitive or irritated, doesn't have any other issues going on in that in that way. Okay, so this was a very basic intro into red light therapy, infrared light therapy. There's definitely way more kind of in-depth discussion that can be had surrounding this topic. There's some, some controversy as well. People also often ask, what are the best red light devices out there? Because first of all, there are so many. Second of all, they can be super pricey. The really popular ones are very expensive. And so you wanna make sure that you're getting your money's worth. And I have to, I hate to break it to you, they are gonna be expensive. It just has something to do with the technology of the light and the manufacturing of it. But um, I will do another video breaking down my favorite red light devices, both for the face and for the scalp and going a little bit more into the science behind it. Like I said, this was just kind of a little bit of a teaser or primer. If you found this video helpful at all, I know it was pretty basic, but Give it a like, share it with somebody looking to age better from the inside out. Have you tried red light therapy? Let me know your experience in the comments. I am gonna share a few of my favorite devices in the description box below, so please remember to check those out. I'll also cite some key scientific studies when it comes to red light. If you wanna learn more about skin longevity, please watch my video right here on the best anti-aging routine based on your age. I'll see you there.